destruction of the planet one soul at a time or many souls at a time these days. Uh, my name is C. Megan Michael. I am a seer, a seeker, a visionary, and a medium. Every Sunday, I present to you spiritual thought leaders from around our world and beyond. My guest today, I am so excited and honored um, to have, this is Tai Chi Master Lester Holmes, otherwise known to many of us as Sifu, which we will talk about, but it is my understanding that means honored teacher. Um, Lester um, has these, he gives free, every single day, free Tai Chi classes to anyone who watches, anyone, and also standing meditation. And he's been doing this for, for at least months since I first discovered him. Spirit drew me to him right away. I literally changed my life and dove in and started doing Tai Chi every day. It's changed my life, and I'm so excited. And I would like for you to join me in welcoming Sifu Tai Chi master, Lester Holmes. Greetings, greetings. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you to everyone who's in attendance today. Um, I'm Sifu Lester Holmes. Um, as Megan says, uh, we're on a mission to raise a vibration, to raise a frequency of the entire planet. Yeah. And um, Spirit led her and I together. We're soul group. And I'm honored to be here on this live stream today. Looking forward to talking about everything we can about Tai Chi. Um, I'm, on, I'm an open book. As she said earlier, uh, my title was Sifu. Some of you may not be familiar with the title, Sifu. Sifu simply means, as she said it, um, it's a teacher. It's a teacher of high skill sets, not only dealing with Tai Chi. You know, Tai Chi is a, is a universal principle based on this logo right here in the back, this yin yang sign, and we'll definitely dive into that. But Sifu could actually mean it could be a, it could be your cab driver. It could be your chef at the restaurant. Okay. It could be the guy that pedicures your lawn. You know, it simply means a person that is very highly skilled in their trade. You know, whether it be and I'm serious, go to China and you get out of the cab, you say, thank you, Sifu to the cab driver, you know, it's simply a title for that. Now in the traditional um, Tai Chi Chuan, which is what I practice, Chuan means fists because originally Tai Chi was a martial art back in the Eastern culture. Now, as it began to make, it way, make its way into the Western world here in Americas and the other Western countries, it became known more for its meditative form, the slow movement, the health and wellness aspect, more opposed to the martial aspect. So as we begin to dive deeper into that, you'll see why people who studied martial arts became interested in this Tai Chi Chuan, which simply means the supreme ultimate. You know, supreme ultimate being supreme ultimate. This supreme ultimate is re referring to the, to the mind. You know, it's very common to, um, I'll say, the practice known as yoga. A lot, a lot more people know about yoga than Tai Chi. Well, these two practices have a lot of similarities, a lot. And you'll see that as we talk about them. Uh, we talk about the chi. You know, yoga may talk about prana. Same thing, that's, different, that's what I want to different Indra, part of the world. That's exactly what I wanted to point out because I, I think a lot of. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. A lot of people um, are not aware, or maybe everybody's aware, but I, I feel like it's like some people they ask like, "What is prana and what is chi?" And in fact, they are the same. Is that correct? Right. According to my understanding, they're they're the exact same thing. Now, when you get into Tai Chi, and um, there's also Qigong, which deals with the breathing. So Tai Chi has Qigong inside of it. Um, they're basically the same thing as the prana, you know, which is energy and which takes a meditative mindset in order to exercise that type of practice. So it's the same thing from that, from that perspective, you know. There's different types of Qi if you want to get deeper and deeper into it, you know. But overall, Qi is energy, you know. 
life force energy. That's what I made. That's our main main reason for practicing this type of practice is to get back in tune with our life force energy. That's so important. And let me ask you this, um, Lester. And, and I, you, normally I call you Sifu because you are my teacher. And I, but I may call you Lester for the broadcast as well. But it's yeah. Anyway, or I might call you Sifu, no but whatever. It's not all of you, and I just wanted you all to know that um, I remember when you, when, when I first saw you and you were saying, thank you, Sifu, and I thought it was an organization or something. I literally didn't yeah. have a clue. I started with zero right. knowledge, and, you know, and now I'm like, I don't know, two and a half, three months into it. So I'm not experienced and anything you say is, but everything that you, that you share, I, I mean, I have to, st I know I still want you to talk about like how you got to there and everything, but I really want to share. I was diagnosed with, um, with rheumatoid arthritis several years ago. I, al I also I was diagnosed with uh, stage, four, stage four lymphoma a few years ago and I healed myself from that, but I was looking for exactly what it is that you have. And I wound up like putting it all together and healing myself, but the, but the joints still were causing me issues and since I've been working out with you, doing the Tai Chi every day, these beautiful free, generously free classes every day, I'm not even kidding. It's changed my life. I can move again. I can move again, Sifu. Right. I was dancing all over the place and, you know, just because I used to do belly dancing and all kinds of dancing throughout my life. And I got very, very stiff and kind of even a little hunched over. And I'm not like mm. that now feeling so free and comfortable within my own body. And I just want to say thank right. you and deeply honor you for this because you, your, your teachings have given me my own life back, my own body, you know? So, well, me, thank you because you're actually, you're actually a living testimony to the practice, you know? So when, when people see what, how you've benefited from the practice and how, how miraculous the practice can be, that'll encourage other people to embark on the journey as well. You know, we, I, you know, the primary guiding principle for Tai Chi is to help and cause no harm. So we, we can't go wrong with that. <laughs> help and cause no harm. I love that. Right. Now, right. That's the so, primary thing. So many things I want to ask you. But before I ask you a million questions about Tai Chi, I would love for you to tell us, if you're drawn, um, a little bit about you, yourself, and how you became uh, how you became a master at, at Tai Chi. And, and, I, and I've, it's my understanding that you've had some challenges in your own life as well. Um, and you've overcome all of these. I don't, I mean, I don't want to take you anywhere you don't want to go, but you just, I'll just give it to you to, you can just take it from there. The book is open. The book is open. You see, by, by me having an open book, you know, that, that helps other people to also understand, you know, how they can grow from the practice as well. So I'll give you a little background on myself. Um, Lester Holmes. Uh, <laughs> I'll start. Where will I start? Well, first of all, I'll, I'll just start right here. I'll start at the end of my, around my high school years. I'll say around the end of my high school years, you know, I kind of got a little lost, you know, started doing things that I shouldn't do, got getting involved in, in the fast world. Um, let's just say that the drugs, uh, the womanizing, the criminal mind activities. Also, at the same time, basically living a dualistic life, thinking that I'm very slick, you know, a criminal at night and good guy in the daytime, one of those type of lifestyles. So I was also in college, you know, being okay. a student. Right. So it was really weird, but, um, and quite stressful to say the least. But anyway, along that journey, selling drugs mm -hmm. began to start using those same drugs and actually became quite addictive to those drugs. Wow. Um, using the drugs that were not my drugs, they were the drugs that I should have been selling. So okay. needless to say, I accumulated a lot of debt. <laughs> and the person who the drugs belonged to was looking for me because they wanted their money. Okay. So here we go. You follow me? I so am. here the My, journey begins. Yeah, that's not part of the story at all. Okay. Wow. Last, so well, here the journey begins. 
Okay, so somebody. This guy. This guy wants more. this. Yeah, the. Yeah, these people want their money, and I don't have it. It's a lots of lots of money. Okay. So oh. I sign up for the military. I drop out of college, in my third year, and I take flight. I run away from my reality. Okay. I go in the military. Um, by the way, I'm a 14 year uh, disabled veteran, uh, war veteran. Been in been in two two uh, two different combat type situations. Wow. Uh, with that with that being said and done, um, I end up paying those guys their debts off while I was in the military because I did owe them. Okay. Um, the military helped me escape the narc, the drug addiction. So that's a good thing that came out of it. Absolutely. Also, while, while I was in the military, I became a uh, competitive bodybuilder. So I completely wow. transformed my life. Wow. I changed my diet. And when I say diet, I mean everything that I consume, not just food, but all resources, anything that went into my body. People. Yes. My association changed. That's diet as well for me. Uh, the things that went into my mouth, I stopped eating animal products. Personal choice. Yes, I understand. Um, no more drugs, of course. Uh, changed my music. I mean, when I say diet, I'm talking about everything that goes into this body changed. Uh, I want. I just got out of the military. The I don't understand. I just want to want to just like commiserate. Is that, commiserate that the right word? I don't think it is. Um, I want to agree with you. I think that was the right word for a moment. And just let you know that that when I healed myself from cancer, that's what I was drawn to do. Exactly what you're saying. The, everything that I took in, the music, the no more TV. Um, I, I was right. eating meat, and I still been a while some chicken. But that's <laughs> but I changed dr dramatically, dramatically. Right. Yeah, I, I right. love what you're saying. Sorry to interrupt. I just yeah. wanted to say that. No, 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 not at you can change all. Change your life from the ground up. From the ground change up, everything. everybody. Change, change everything. everything. I mean, Sorry, literally, through, like you said, through, throughout the television. I, I call yeah. it the television, but that's another story. I know, uh, throughout I the television. Yeah, me too. Uh, divorced family members, literally. Anybody that wasn't going in the same direction that I was going in, divorced them. Divorced best friend of, of, of 20 plus years. Anybody who wasn't making the changes that I saw as being holistic and, and changing my life, I had to get them out of the way. They were simply distractions. And uh, I was already dealing with issues from the military, uh, men mental issues. And... Uh, Especially, especially once I got discharged from the military because I wasn't planning on getting discharged. I was planning on staying for a whole 20 years and being a uh, retiring. But like I said, I did 14 years. Uh, they, they, they forced me out because of injuries. And when I got out, I went into a great state of depression. Uh, met the love of my life. Um, when I, when I, I relocated to South Florida, and I, I met the love of my life, and uh, she introduced me to this culture. My wife is from Hong Kong, okay. so she's Asian, and Tai Chi is known for coming from the Asian tradition, Chinese specifically. And um, wow, this segues right into it. Um, I needed help. I needed help. I needed mental help. She introduced me to go to a, um, a Chinese New Year celebration. Yeah. Right here in the same town I reside in right now. We go in. I'm, I'm coming from a southern background, Christian boy. Deep okay. Christian culture. Mm -hmm. Very deep. I wouldn't dare step foot into a Buddhist temple. My oh. parents would hang me. Okay. That's how I grew up. I understand. Right? I met this woman, she offered me, and I stepped my foot into a Chinese Buddhist temple. And when I went in there and I saw some gentlemen doing the Tai Chi form, it simply, it grabbed me. It embraced me and I never looked back. I told my wife, I says, wow, what is that that they're doing? It looks so beautiful. Um, it looks like a martial art, but it's in slow motion, so it made no sense to me. 
It's right. it's being You're done not... in slow motion. <laughs> right. There's no linear no linear point. movements because it's all circular, low impact movements. It made no sense. It looked like a tranquil dance with martial movements. Well, lo and behold, that's exactly what it is. It's known as meditation in motion. I didn't know any of this at the time. Um, I didn't know anything about meditation or the benefits of meditation. I had no idea what I had just signed up for. But anyway, she said, if you want to uh, find out about it, go and talk to the teacher. So I did just that. I went over, I spoke to the teacher, and uh, that was my very first teacher, Master Fong, a little, little Chinese man. He, he moved back to China years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I spoke with him, and he said, uh, I teach a class one time for you on a Tuesday morning, only on a Tuesday morning. And I'm thinking, wow, I have to go to work on Tuesday morning. I can't miss my job. I got a good job. I'm a realtor. You know, I'm making good money. Okay. I'm I can't I'm not go to work. work. Uh -huh. Right. I'm, I'm actually in the mortgage industry and uh, making good money. I can't let this go and get in the way. And my partners are not going to want to hear me talking about I'm going to do some meditation. <laughs> but anyway, I decided that I'm going to do the Tai Chi and I'm going to quit the job. Wow. We had just, wow. my wife and I just so bought a new house. At that moment, when you didn't even, there was no like, like you're, they're getting paid to do the Tai Chi. It was like, oh, in order for me to do this no, no, class, no. I have to stop what I, you're, really? Wow. Right. I got to stop what I'm doing and I got to go in because I can only get it on this day. And I go in. And I, I come back home and I tell my wife, I said, uh, hmm. I say, honey, he only gone for the class on Tuesday. And she's like, well, you have to work, blah, 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 whatever. So the next day I go to work, I tell my guys, I tell my guys, hey, I'm quitting. I didn't tell them why. I go home, I tell my wife, honey, I quit the job. She looked at me like I'm crazy because we just bought a brand new house. Wow. And her income is about this much. Right. And... Uh, we really don't know how we're going to do it, but I knew that I needed some help. And that Tuesday, that Tuesday morning, I was sitting on my cushion. I'm looking for it. It's not here. I still have it, my meditation cushion. And uh, I began my meditation class that morning. And Sifu, my teacher, he only taught me meditation for six months. He would not teach me any Tai Chi, he said, because my mind was too scattered. Okay. So it was six months, meditation only, um, sitting meditation, chanting, uh, walking meditation. And uh, that's the beginning of my, beginning of my uh, Tai Chi journey. That's how I got on this, this path. Uh, I had no idea that it was even there. And I hadn't looked back since. I've been full time ever since. Wow. And um, Tai Chi gave me life. I give Tai Chi my life. I love that. What an amazing, that, that's such an amazing story. It's so, I just have to like, I relate because when I, um, literally when I first started doing the Tai Chi every day from two to three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, still every day, Sifu Lester does the free Tai Chi, but then he added on um, standing meditation from one to two. So from two, well, from 1 p.m. till 3 p.m. in the middle of the afternoon, I suddenly had to completely change my schedule, which really interfered with with work, which then oddly disappeared, which had nothing to do with it, but but it was, it was weird. It was like spirit was saying, I said, but spirit, I know I need to do this, but don't I have to work? <laughs> They're like, you need to do that. <laughs> yeah. And so this is really becoming right. part of my own. Uh, that's just so interesting. I never knew that part of your story. Where So how did this yeah. talk more about the unfolding and, and, uh, and meditation? And tell us everything, whatever you want to talk about. I'm so excited about all of it. <laughs> well, um, like I said, once I told my I told my spouse that I was I was going to leave the job or whatever, and she thought that I had lost my mind, um, I started taking the, the the seated meditation classes every Tuesday morning. I started hanging out with my teacher. I say hanging out. Um, I started finding ways to be around my teacher more and more and more. You see, because um, the way that it works in in this type of art form, they have uh, we have what they call we have students. Right. 
general, we call them general students. Okay. We have, um, then there's another, another type of student, which is an inner door student, That's inner human. door. So you have, you have a general student that you, you know, just like you come in, in big groups. And then you have an inner door student who, who would be more like a, 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 a daughter or a son. Someone that would not only learn um, th these movements from you, but they would actually learn the lifestyle from you because they would end up being around you for multiple hours per day. So I ended up being around my teacher multiple hours a day. In other words, when most people were working for eight hours a day, I was with my teacher for eight hours a day. Wow. Throughout those eight hours a day, what would we be doing? We would be doing father-son activities with Tai Chi training. I'd be, we'd be, we'd be cooking together. We'd be uh, cutting grass together. We'd be painting together. The whole time he's teaching to me. He's always teaching philosophy. He's always um, helping me to uh, remove all the toxification that was planted <laughs> and um, make the like soil fertile. It's a little, it reminds me of the little, remember the movie Karate Kid? I don't, and I just remember, like, it kind of, I kind of, that's how I'm relating it in my own human mind. That the relationship in the movie was it was was it was like that. And by the way, I just wanted to add, it was, you it said was just of, like that. You said some of your neighbors call you sensei because sensei and sifu mean the same thing in different uh, languages. Is that correct? Right. So 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 we have sifu, and and like I said, that's that's mostly known in inside of the ch the Chinese culture. Okay. Now sensei. Um, that's more related to the karate, karate, mm -hmm. because Tai Chi is also known as a type of Kung Fu. See, Kung Fu is Chinese. Okay. Right? Yeah. But the karate is Japanese. So they use, this, they use a title as well for teacher or highly skilled person that is similar to Sifu or equivalent to that, but it's called Sensei. So... Okay. Karate is a lot more common. Karate is a lot more common than the Chinese martial arts. So most people, whenever they see anybody that's related to martial arts, if they know you're a teacher, they automatically call you sensei, opposed to sifu. You get it? I yes, I believe right, I do. So I, I, I embrace them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. It's you know yeah, the energy, I, I never you, correct them. Right? That's a that's a beautiful thing. All right, so I interrupted you. So so you're spending like eight hours a day doing father son activities, and and your set and your sensei, your sifu is teaching you is teaching you throughout the day. Yeah, he's always teaching me something all day yes. long, all day long. We're making Chinese herbs. We're um we're studying you know we're studying anatomy and physiology. We're doing tai chi movement. We're meditating. We it is a lifestyle. You know, we're doing honeydews at the same time because we're both married as well. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just a full, it's a full, it's, it's a way of bringing the, the temple style life into our civilized world. Wow. And I, I just, I love the lifestyle. I've been, and I've been doing this. That's been my lifestyle ever since. Like I said, I gave Tai Chi life and Tai Chi gave me life. And people don't believe that. I said, you know what? When I first started, over time, I found ways to slowly but surely replace more of my time with Tai Chi. And it's, Tai Chi just gave me a fair exchange of time. It started giving me more time, literally. It's like, if you give Tai Chi 20 minutes, Tai Chi is going to give you 20 more minutes somewhere in your life. And before you know it, it's going to take over. It's going to consume your life. But you have to trust the practice. That's how it's worked for me. It's amazing. It, it really is. I get excited thinking about it. Cool. And it, and it shows. It shows <laughs> through, your, through your teaching, uh, Lester. It does. I mean, that you're so passionate about it and that you could, you know, I and you it. could even see it. It's like even with the standing meditation, you're like, okay, I'm going to stop talking now. But you want to just keep teaching. You're like, I'm going <laughs> to stop talking now. I really mean it. I mean, one minute, but I just have to say one more thing. <laughs> but oh my God, it's amazing. And, and standing meditation, yeah. I never even of that before I met you and I thought because I meditate all the time that's part of how a big part of how I changed my life you know and mm -hmm. now for me it's like 
that's that's you know a daily usually a daily thing for me at least and um mm -hmm. and so standing oh my god the first day i have to share like the first day i felt like it was torture <laughs> i think i said that too. really huh I said that but wait that but after that it started to feel really good my body wasn't used to standing yeah. remember i was telling you when i first right. started in the time i hadn't been moving a lot i'm sitting in this office mm. chair a lot and so i was very i have a lot of pain in my body so now i'm standing there with the weight of my body and my lower back and i'm like oh i have to stand this whole time but uh mm -hmm. but honestly this whole thing has just been a, a process yes. and it's been so gentle it's been so gentle. It's like I always thought that because mm. I used to be a bodybuilder too. I went from a from a very morbidly obese woman in my thirties to a bodybuilder and lost seventy pounds and I was ripped. And a year later, and so, but I re I remember if it you know like no pain, no gain. You know, and, and I knew if I didn't feel mm. the, 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 the healing, then I wasn't doing anything. And my stretching, I was always mm -hmm. you know making sure that I had to feel everything that I was stretching. And, and this is like, I almost felt right. like sometimes. And yet when we're done, um, my body is buzzing with the, with the chi, my chi flowing and everything feels better. Right. And, and I, I didn't even like lay down on the ground mm. once and I didn't lift anything heavy. It's the mm. most incredible thing guys. It really is. <laughs> right. <sure>. So, so <laughs> can I pick, can I piggyback off of that? Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now, now you mentioned now that you mentioned that you see, Tai Chi, unlike the uh, Western exercise, right? It is just what you said. It's meditation in motion, so it's not a physical exercise per se. It's mm -hmm. completely different. And you know, people always say, "Why, why do you move so slow?" You know, because Tai Chi looks like a beautiful dance, right? If if people see it, it looks like a beautiful dance. But mm -hmm. you know, it's mind, body spirit and life energy connected bringing those things back together you know when people do like just lifting weights they're not you can lift weights you can listen to music you can you can do so many things while you're lifting weights you don't have to be as focused so it's not the same type of exercise it's completely different to be honest with you yeah. Yeah. you know when you're dealing with when you're dealing with i love that too but i haven't but it's I'm a right. i don't know this is my thing now. I'm really into this. Right. So if, if you lift weights, that's fine. Yeah, you can do both. But know that they're not the same is the, is the point. I under Yeah, oh, okay. just know that they're completely different. You understand what I mean? But one doesn't replace different. the other one. They're, yes, you're right. You're right. This, yeah, they're completely different. different. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, when, you started, when we started the classes and you started talking about... about I'm, 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 I guess I'm stuck so because I'm supposed to give it to you, but you the, the whole thing is so spiritual, and I didn't know that. I really thought it was going to be a physical thing. Right. You know? Right. Martial it's art. very That's, spiritual. Yes. Right. So people people don't know even even if even if you study Tai Chi as a martial art, I do I do teach it as a martial art as well. I teach it in it in its entirety. But I teach it according to the students, uh, whatever the student wants to learn it as. If you only want to learn it as a martial art, I'll teach it to you only as that. But if you want to learn it as, as what it truly can be, because it can be a lot more than that. It can be a healing art, you know. It's, you build up the energies of a Ricky practitioner as well, where you can do healing hands. You can lay hands. I lay hands all the time. You know, and I talk about some miraculous stories from the laying of hands. You know, so it can be what you want. But first and foremost, as I said, it's not a physical exercise because is lifting weights going to teach you how to lay hands? <laughs> no, it's not. You know, so Tai Chi, first and foremost, for me, it is a self-realization slash self-actualization training. People say they want to find out what their passion is. Okay. I say you don't have to find out what your passion is. If you find out how to self-realize and self-activate, your passion will find you. You will become your passion because your passion is already there. You just don't know what it is because you don't know yourself. So wait, can you, you understand? Back, so not exactly. So I'm going to ask you to dig a little, a little bit deeper into what is self actualization and self realization. 
Right. So I'll go here. So self actualization and self actual actualization. So if you think about it like this, all of us, myself included, from birth until the age of seven years old, follow me, our brains are developed only to the point where it's functioning on a, not on a conscious level, but more on a subconscious level, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, in other words, our environment, everything in our environment is basically our universe. We absorb it all. Yes. There's no, no critical thinking in those ages. Yes. <laughs> right. There's no filters. So basically, a lot of information that we receive, it wasn't authentic information. It's coming from somebody else. It was given to us. Yes. Right? Yes. And if yes. we don't realize that, see, that this is where the realization comes in. If we don't realize that, we end up living the majority, if not all of our life, according to someone else's beliefs or whatever, whatever it is, their traditions and not our way. Yes. So through Tai Chi, we're able to self-realize. Example, you just mentioned that you've been meditating for a long time, right? Yes. Well, a lot of people who meditate they meditate with the idea of escaping their body, getting away from their body. So it's more of a mind practice and not a body practice. So in Tai Chi, we train to go from mind to body, which leads to feeling through the breath. <laughs> okay, mind to body to feel. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, sometimes I have to absorb instead of try to. Right, right, right. The energy so basically, I mean, I the breath, that. yeah, the breath is going to take us to feeling. Yes, okay. Feeling, true feeling, takes us to original life energy. It's feeling, yeah. it's not thinking. Yes. It's a feeling practice and not a thinking practice. So meditation is thinking, right? The language of the mind is thought. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you I'm, think I'm... to remove the, it, it, it's, it's, it's using cognitive abilities, no matter what. If you're thinking to sit there and, and count the breath, you're still counting the breath. You're using your mind to count the breath, right? That's I, cognitive I ability because you're actually counting. Release, release, but that's my own way of doing it. But I'm, but I, but I, under, I honor and respect what you're, what you're saying and where, and where you're going with this. So please continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, this is the way that we train, train in the system. So you use the mind, right? First, mm -hmm. by sitting still, you start recognizing the thoughts that's coming to your mind. So you start seeing: is there a repetitive cycle of thoughts? It's coming to my mind. And then you associate those thoughts. Why are those thoughts there? Where are they coming from? Right? What's, what, where, what's the root of these thoughts? So this is the thinking, the mind. This is the, uh, this is the yes. part of the meditation practice that is actually uh, the intention of, of finding out the root of yourself. That's why I say it's mental. Right? Okay. The beginning. Right? Then we get away yes. from that. We get away from that once we discover it. Then we work yes. on another technique where we go about we go about removing that. We re, we start removing the weeds from the garden. But first, we have to discover the weeds and see where they are and how they present themselves and where they're coming from. Wow! Right. This is so we're so cultivating the field. So basically, you're removing all the old filters. That's another thing that I realize as a psychic and a medium and right. and and. The Tai Chi, like like you're talking about getting back to the original life force, and that's intuition, the feeling. It's in, I, I, I call that intuition. And now you're talking about like right. what I always do with my clients and, and my viewers, our co-creators, like we're the soul family, like you call them soul family too, is the, uh, like I call it like removing the old filters that were programmed into us in right. childhood. 
So my own personal beliefs would, before I knew anything about Tai Chi, really flow right into the teachings. I just I want to, and I have a feeling it's going to resonate with a lot of people on this way, in this in this way. And I really wanted to point that out because if you, you know, I always say, you know, take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Let us know in the comments if this if this resonates with you, even if you're not familiar with Tai Chi yet. Just uh, let us know. So please continue. Yeah. Right, so that that's what's so unique about the practice. It beca is because it, it does like it it flows over into other types of practices, you know, and then and then you can find a way to bring it into your personal lifestyle. That that's what's so unique about it. Um, the main part of the Tai Chi practice is every everything comes from no thing. Everything mm -hmm. comes from no thing. So that's part of the. We got to get rid of the filters. We got to start pulling out the roots, pulling out the weeds, to, you know, to, to create the fertile field. The field is not already fertile. When I say the fertile field, I'm talking about the mind, yes. you know, yes. and, and that's where the meditation come in. That's the nothingness part of the practice. So with the mindfulness, we learn how to go into another very important aspect of Tai Chi training, which is the proper way to breathe, you know, the proper breathing method, you know, um, breathing through the nose, you know, and, and why and what does that do, you know, as opposed to breathing in the mouth and, and what does that do, you know, and also with breath, we must also have correct posture, body posture, correct structure. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get into having the correct structure with the correct mind, with the correct breathing. So we have the mind, body, and the spirit uniting once you can get all of those things together because the breath leads to spirit. You get what I'm saying? So now you too. end up having a practice where you're not just sitting on, on your cushion, you know, because we're not always sitting. You know, we're in motion, we're moving. So how do we take that into motion? And a lot of people realize that once they get off their cushion, and they enter into a stressful environment, it's not as easy to maintain that meditative state of mind. But mm. with our practice, you learn how to take that into all aspects of your life and not just sitting on the cushion. As you said, you notice when you're standing, doing your standing meditation practice, right? We're searching for, I won't say searching for, but we're developing that wuji state wuji you know it's w-u-j-i which means no thing we're developing that well how do we develop that like you said you started noticing some pains in your legs or someone may start noticing some pains in their shoulder you know old injuries may may show up you know so now remember i said feeling so now you're starting to feel your body so unlike a lot of other meditative practices where people want to get out of their body we want to come into our body Which because so we want different. to work through feeling. And you once said we you come in, Go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. once we come in and we make a connection with those filters, mm. the practice changes, changes into or develops into letting go. It becomes a letting go practice. We want to open our joints, every joint in our body, talking about structure again. We want to open our mind. We want to open everything. We want to become expansive with the entire universe. That's when we move into level three. We have three levels, heaven, man, and earth, right? So heaven is the sky level. Okay. Heaven, man, and earth, right? So the sky level or heaven is when you let go and start opening up. And you have become one. You know, that's when you, you've got all of your chakras, like yoga. We talk about chakras. We talk about dantians, which means the base thing as a chakra. It's an energy center. That's where the energy or the chi is stored and collected, right? In the beginning, we put the energy in our lower dantian, which is below our belly button. We focus there. Remember I said it's a mind practice? So we yes. put our mind on our lower dantian. Now, once that thing fills up with energy, with chi, it starts mm -hmm. to flow up naturally. There's no more thinking now. It's mm -hmm. happening naturally. Now, the heart chakra begins to open. And there's mm -hmm. practices that helps us to do that as well. And then we begin to move up higher and higher and higher. 
You know, the ultimate goal of these practices, and by the way, these were Taoist practices that were practiced by the monks that live in the mountain away from civilization. Mm. Their practice, their highest level of practice was to reach immortality. Now, oh. immortality not meaning not meaning walking around in flesh forever on the earth's surface. That's not what they meant. Immortality was to live more than 100 years old. Not only to live to be more than 100, but to live childishly, meaning to be springy and robust, you know, fertile mind, healthy body, high spirit, not moping around, dragging off of uh, pharmaceuticals and, and, and living a unauthentic lifestyle. They wanted to do yeah. the exact opposite. So that was immortality for them. And that's, that's the ultimate goal of Tai Chi, to live a long, fruitful life, longevity. That's the, goal. that's the ultimate goal. Wow. I want to just point out. A lot there, Linda, I know. <laughs> Linda, no, yeah, it is. It is and, I, and, I, and I love it, all of it, all of it. And you're, you're, you're totally resonating. Um, uh, Belinda saying standing meditation. I'm loving that. I want. I am too, Belinda. I mean, only after the first day when I when it felt like torture to me, I got over that because I I knew I felt mm -hmm. my spirit saying saying just just go forward. And not only that, but I reached out to to Sifu, who I don't remember what you said, but whatever you said really inspired me to get over myself. It was so nice. You didn't say anything pushy, but I knew that you know. You know what I mean? You didn't mm -hmm. say anything like, oh, well, if it hurts, don't do that. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> you know, whatever you said, I was like, oh, I meant to keep doing this, you know? Right. I love so that so the ultimate, you know, the ultimate goal is, is for us to simply have continuous improving progress and, and just moving towards the unlimited, you know, the great eternal whatever that may be for you may be different for me. You know, we all have, like, like Sifu always says, is your Tai Chi. You know, how can we live our best life ever? And that's the whole objective of, of the whole training is to, to move us towards living our best life ever through the, the connection of the mind, the body, and the spirit through, through these wonderful exercises, you know. Play and with the entire universe. Practice, <laughs> you know, which, uh, I love that because I, I always thought like with any kind of, I, don't, I had my own limiting beliefs, like with any kind of a martial arts or a practice that it would have to be a specific way. And although there definitely are things that you say that this is the right way to breathe or the right way to stand or whatever, you always encourage us to make it our own practice and to personalize it just like you're right. So, now. Right, so we have these um, basic forms or mm -hmm. basic types of movements and those movements all are based on tai chi principle so what is tai chi principle a lot of people might have heard about yin and yang you know or, or seen this emblem behind me right mm -hmm. a lot of yes. people seen that but what does it what does it actually mean so we work towards embodiment embodiment of these principles through movement you know it it's a it's a very deep science but if you look at this this sign here it just looks so simple but you know they say the simplest is really like the most complicated you know when you can break something down to a very minute level that's pretty complicated think about it it's very complicated, you know, to, to find someone that can really break something down and, and not just give it to you in a complex way. You know, they can give you these big names, but what does it really mean? So Tai Chi breaks down the how-to and don't just give you these really complicated things. We have simple forward and backward. I say it all the time. Forward and backwards, right? Yeah. That's pretty yes. simple. Your forward and backwards may look a little different from mine. Our bodies are different. We move different. But forward and backwards is forward and backwards. We have left and right. We have up and down. Right? We have in and out. And we have the four corners. See, we talk about eight primary directions. I just gave it to you. How simple was that? 
forward, backward, left and right. We have in and out. We have the four corners. You know, all this is, is very simple, but not so simple. You get what I'm saying? I do. And all of that I, I is based off the yin and yang. I'm absorbing it as much all as I can. I'll have to absorb more later, but I'm, I'm, I'm following. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I mean, I, it gets, it gets, it gets, it gets red. It gets really, really deep, and, and it can be quite confusing. But the way that the teaching works is you just pick up the little bits, mm -hmm. the little bits, the little bits. It's like stacking sheets of paper over time because this is a lifetime practice. There's no finish line. It can take a lifetime to get there. Where's there? There is no there. <laughs> you just keep going. There's no there. You know, there's no thing, actually. There's, it's just, it's just a lifestyle. And you continue to do it, and you reap benefits. And you reap the benefits forever. Each individual's personal experience will definitely be different. Yes. Guaranteed. We're talking about original life force energy. We're talking about individuality. Although we have community, we must have individuality. You know, all of us become our better selves. And when we can become our better selves, the whole entire civilization benefits. Creativity has no boundaries. Civilization can be improved to the highest levels of achievement. Don't that make sense? Yeah, totally. Resonates with every cell in yeah. my being. Yeah, absolutely. And every... Yeah. The human, the, simply because the human body, the human body has no restrictions. And some people figure that out. And when, when we all work towards that and don't get off track, as I said, civilization can be improved to the highest levels of achievement. That's why we're here. To raise the frequency, to raise the vibration. You get what I'm saying? I totally do. I, I totally, you're, you're speaking my language. You're hey, raising uh, the vibration. Hey, one, one second, one second, one second. Sure, whatever you'd like. Uh, it des that deserved that. Okay, carry on. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, that's all right, That's man. why we're you here, to raise, to raise the frequency, to, to bring humanity to a higher level. We got so many people struggling from anxiety and all types of things. That's one of the biggest reasons I started offering these free live streams every single day of my life. Two hours per day. I've been doing this from the beginning of this so-called lockdown. You see, because I know that although we're locked down physically, we're not locked down spiritually. And I got to let more people know that. And I got to teach more people how to realize that. That's why I'm here. I love that. And you talk about that a lot. And, um, and I, I have to say, I, okay, so the, I, I want to address your question, Deborah Raybuck Sharp, but I first want to, I feel, feel really drawn to share something. How was I drawn to Sifu? This is really important, guys, because this is spirit, okay? So how was I drawn to Sifu? I saw him, I'm not even sure which group it was. It was a group, and I saw him doing the movements, and I was really drawn. And so obviously, you know how it is on Facebook, and so you find the person, and then you follow them, and you send a friend request or whatever. And then I started watching every day. And she, But when I found the friend request, he lives in the town that my mother lives in, <laughs> the town oh, that yeah. I moved <laughs> that I moved away from when I moved here six years ago. And my mother still lives right there in assisted living. When my mother was in the hospital one wow. day, and I want to talk about the healing too, also, which is amazing. I didn't know Tai Chi had anything to do with healing. Um, my mom was in the hospital. Sifu says, that's, I could walk there. It's a block from my house. <laughs> okay. So literally, I mean, literally we were neighbors. We were, we were physically neighbors. We didn't know each other at the time. It wasn't the right mm. time. And, and here we are now, we're only a few hours apart. We, I'm sure we'll meet at some point, uh, and, but we meet every day. And I know, I feel like I even connect with you on the astral because I have questions answered and, and like I wake up, I don't know, different, inspired. I mean, I realize I'm talking to other spirit too, but I, I do, I just feel so connected to your energy. And I feel like you resonate with a lot of people like that. This is no, spirit's mm. been showing me from the very beginning, Sifu, that, that you are, what you're doing is, is very important. And I just feel like really drawn to say that. And I want to share something that you always say, like, because like, I know some people might be thinking, well, he's been doing this for months now. How can I possibly as a beginner come in? 
and I hear you mention this all the time. I'll give that to you. Ooh, we're getting healing, aren't we? Oh my God, I'm feeling it. He's healing us. Well, hmm. the connection is all too real. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. So I want to ask, and I want, I want to address um, Deborah's question about what does Tai Chi mean in English? What does Tai Chi mean in English? Yes. Um, tai Chi. T-A-I. One word. C-H-I. is a common way that you'll see this practice um, spelled out and pronounced. That means the ultimate. Now, you'll also see it as Tai Chi Chuan, mm -hmm. C-H-U-A-N on the end of Tai Chi. So the C-H-U-A-N is specifically referring to the martial aspect. Okay. Supreme ultimate fist. Now, most people don't practice it as a martial art. So you'll see it more commonly, commonly referred to as Tai Chi, which is the ultimate. And as I said before, when, whenever you think of ultimate, improving and progressing towards the unlimited. All of us, every single day. So you says, where does a new person come in when we have been on this journey for several months now. Well, Megan, when, when you came on to the journey, we had already begun as well. We begun this journey uh, several months ago when I was outside and not inside the studio. And a new person comes in and begins exactly where they are. Come as you are. Because the way that this practice works, mm -hmm. the information that is provided to new people is the same information that people have been practicing for a long time also benefits from having. And that'll make more sense to you later. But the simple practices or the simple um, postures also have higher level trainings inside, if that makes sense to you. Yes. So I can teach one movement to a beginner. I can teach one movement to a beginner, and I can teach that same movement to an advanced person, and they'll both benefit from the same movement. But they'll be looking at the movement from different perspectives, and both practitioners will benefit. So in other words, here comes another one of my guiding principles is that we grow together. Oh. We simply grow together. That's one of the guiding lights of my principles, of my practice. No one is left behind. Right? So I'll, I'll share this with you. This is very important. If you look at any successful organization, now I'll break that word down. What does that mean? Organization. Okay. Right, to organize, to come together, to work mm -hmm. in harmony, unification, right? So any successful organization. Now, what is success? It could be a number of different things depending on the person that is talking about success. But let's talk about success from this standpoint, longevity, right? Mm -hmm. What is longevity? Long, healthy life. So first of all, we must come together as man and woman or in fellowship right that's the first principle coming together and these are the principles that tai chi 360 which is a program that i develop we abide by these principles right community is also an organization so tai chi 360 is a real live breathing community organization we come together, number one, as man and woman, as child and 
adult, as whatever. We all come together. Working together in harmony, right? Number two is the sharing of knowledge. Right, so we all share together in the community. You may have a specialty. I may have a specialty. We all have different specialties. You may be an auto automobile mechanic or a hairdresser. I teach Tai Chi, right? Number three is, so we have manhood or, or womanhood or fellowship. We have scholarship. Now we have perseverance, meaning that we must persevere along, along the way. Perseverance. We have to. We can't give up. Right? And then number yes. four is uplift. We're talking about having a successful community. We have uplift. We must help each other. No one will be left behind. We grow together. So we reach back to pull the other person up. So the same principles that we do in our Tai Chi form in our movement are the same principles that you can take into your household and have a successful marriage or successful family atmosphere, successful community, a successful business, a successful organization. Because the cells in our body, they function under the same principles. Those same four pillars that I just shared with you, the cells in our body do the exact same thing because they're in the organ system. Wow. Hold on a minute. One second. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so think have, about that and, and, and let that marinate. Do you have a little more time? Because this first hour went so fast. I got all the time in the world. I got oh all the time in the up. world. And this Stay phone seems guys. to be charging up nicely. Awesome. awesome. So let's just have fun. And if you guys have any questions. I'm sorry. Sometimes I go off on these little rant. I, I kind of go off on these little tangents sometimes and I may draw out the answer. But that's just what, that's you know, when spirit comes to me, I just let it go. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, when I do it, I say I'm channeling spirit. <laughs> I'm saying there's so many similarities. It's so, I just find it so amazing. The whole thing is just so amazing. If you guys have questions. So group. Yeah. So group yes. organization. Yes, yes, yes. Same thing. I love that. Jennifer Williams says we all have different pieces of the jigsaw and together we get the whole picture. I love this. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We all have our own specialty. And when and when we can when we can be each other's biggest cheerleaders, when I want to see you do better than I do, that's when we become a successful organization, aka soul group. That's the way I teach my Tai Chi. And that's why I teach with so much passion. I love because I, so I honestly and truly, I truly and honestly want to see everybody happy and healthy. I've always been that way. Always been that way. I think that's incredible. And I, 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 I just keep saying the same thing. It, just, it all resonates. And those of you who've watched my live streams for a while, you know, <laughs> isn't it so, amazing? So now, you, now, so now that you see how you see how this practice, which supposedly yes. is is a a martial art or a meditation in motion or a hobby or whatever it may be. You see how it can become a way that civilization can actually be improved? <laughs> Do you see that? Off of these yeah. simple principles? It's so simple. So, so this is my idea. This is an idea that I have. You know, okay. we live in a pretty, we live in a pretty dusty world, I would say. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way, right? And it may seem more dustier now than ever. But with all of that being said and done, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And we learn how to create a system within the system. So basically, we create our soul group. A soul group is a real, live, breathing organization of us 
that's the way we make it in, in this world. That's the ultimate goal of this practice, not just to have it as a personal practice where it doesn't benefit everybody. So I'm talking about changing the world. I am changing the world by changing me. I'm changing the world by changing me. Is that what you just said? Yes, and that's a big shout out right there. One of my students, uh, one of my students, that's his, um, that's his principle that he lives by. And actually, you, you may have saw it on the T-shirt that one day with um, yes. Santos. Yes. Right, that one. He, he had on a purple one. I had on a red one. And that's what it says on the front, changing the world by changing me. And that's the name of his album, actually. So, oh, okay. Santos. Yeah, he's an artist out of uh, Asheville, North Carolina. A student of mine. And uh, I live by that principle. I live by it. I do too. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. I know me. you do. That's why. That's that's why it's so group. And there's others of us because you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. Your vibe yeah. attracts your tribe. So if if you're faking it, you're going to affect, you're going to attract something else that's not real. That's why we have to be ourselves because your your true vibe attracts your vibe. Now, if you're faking it, what are you going to attract? <laughs> you're not going to attract your tribe. No. You're not. No. But, but then, right. but, but now, then if now you're, lying to yourself, you're not going to understand why. You'll be thinking, but I'm such an up, you know, upright person. Why would I attract this kind of person into my life? Because you're not who you think you are. You're lying to yourself, still going, still living in the, right. old, in the old paradigms, right? Right. 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 Because we're all <laughs> reflections of ourselves. Yes. We're reflections. Yes. We're truly reflections. Jody is asking. Way she's beyond, saying, way beyond. I'm sorry. Uh, me too. I'm sorry. Um, she says, can you please post the four pillars that Lester spoke on? Uh, so is that something that you could write out for us? And then I can, uh, you can, we can post it. I'll in do the that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll write it out and I'll give it to you, Megan. And I'll be glad to post it in our group. And you can also post it in now, definitely. If, now if you guys I must have say, I must say that that you will have to remind me of that, Megan. Sure, my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, I, w I was honored to create the the art that's in the background of, of the group, the channel art. Spirit asked me to do it. Oh, I didn't thank know you very that. much. I really appreciate that. that oh, I'm beautiful. so glad that you like it. I mean, I was kind of like, I felt like, I hardly know this gentleman, but I, I felt so drawn so to create that. And I, so I gave it to you and then, but I saw it literally, I, I saw the whole thing. They showed it to me in the group. They had to be so making beautiful. that side. So professional. That's what I'm talking about. So group, we all have our skill sets. We come together yes. and we help each other and everybody benefits and we grow together. How many people in the group today is going to be actually attending tomorrow? Because we do the live streams every every day at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right, in the USA time zone. I'm sure we have someone here who's not been in attendance. Going to come tomorrow. Who's going to be more tomorrow? Than welcome. No. Start, start where you are. Beginners are more than welcome. Don't feel intimidated. Everyone gets lost. One of my other things that I say all the time is we have to lose ourselves to find ourselves. So come and get lost. Come have fun. There's no disciplinary action. Don't discipline yourself because I won't. It's not necessary. We're that. just having fun. We call it we call it playing Tai Chi. Oh, Do you okay. get disciplined for playing Tai Chi? No, we don't discipline anyone from playing Tai Chi. We're just having fun. That's it. Yeah. That's and it. I've, I've, missed, I've missed a few days, you know, the, this past week. And I had to let myself know that I'm okay with that. It's okay. Right. You know, and I Absolutely. My, my life happens sometimes. And I mean, I literally moved my, my business, my clients, everything in the beginning. And then this has just been a little bit of an, um, you know, a shift this past week. And that's okay, too. And so, but I'm just going to jump now, back let, in. Let me, let me, let, let me, let me, let me piggyback off of that. Please. So now we, although we, although we meet as a group every single day, personal practice is just as, if not more important than the group practice. So even mm -hmm. if you can't make it, once you've been able to put one or two practices into your toolbox, into your memory, 
one or two movements, when you wake up, get you 10, 15 minutes in of just that one movement or whatever it is that you happen to retain. Remember, I said it's a personal practice. We have yeah. a soul group, but we must have our personal practice because when we're alone, we're able to get more into our meditative state of mind. And we can do our personal practice. Personal practice is key. You get what I'm saying? I do. I do. I'm also sorry. I also found another way to make sure I shared it to all the groups. I, I just noticed that. I'm like, oh, I don't want to miss that opportunity. Okay. So I had to grab. Yeah, because I know there's no, so many no problem. people that, that, you know, because I used to share to like a lot of groups. And then um, I thought maybe I was oversharing when I lost my page. So I didn't lose it. I didn't lose anything. But anyway, when anyway, so I but I feel like this is important. And uh, what's going to be is going to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, when you when so you started sharing before, when you started sharing before, it was crazy how many views people were like viewing live at the time before. It was amazing. A hundred. You had literally had ninety nine one day. Ninety nine. It might have gone to a hundred. Yeah. I passed out, but it reached ninety nine. Those are live. Those are concurrent views. He had like nineteen hundred or or over two thousand, a couple of few thousand. Oh no, over, five thousand. Five thousand views. Five thousand views. But live, yeah, five you, and, you had a hundred. Right. I was I was sharing all over the place because I just felt so drawn that everyone should have an opportunity to. I mean, think of all. I mean, especially the, all the people that you can that that you're that have the opportunity to be helped and the healing, the healing. When when, when you when, before we end this today, I'd love for you to talk about the healing. Where does healing even come in to Tai Chi and that experience when you healed my mom and we were all, the whole soul group was there. I'm sorry, thank you so profoundly for that and thank all the soul group that was there. But the experience was uh, very deeply impactful and uh, Oh, I guess it's hard to even know how, what to say. I didn't, has Tai Chi, does, has it always included healing or is that a Lester, Sifu Lester thing or? No, 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 no. So <sighs> let me just say this. So okay, I'm, about, I'm about to be educated here, guys. <laughs> when it comes to actually learning Tai Chi, I'll just say this. You're only going to learn what your teacher can teach you okay. to begin with. So. A lot of Tai Chi systems don't involve as much of a deep meditative work that I share with you all. See, so my teachings come from Temple Tai Chi. Temple Tai Chi. And we focus a lot on the meditative aspect of the training. I've never seen any other system focus on that as much as we do. Okay. We also focus on the healing or laying of hands, the healing hands. Uh, to be honest with you, yeah, to be honest with you, I really had no idea that I was learning that. Oh, wow. I had no idea that I was learning that. I knew that I was learning to work with chi or with prana or with energy. And that I could move that energy through my body and that it would come out of my hands. But I never knew that it could be used to help heal and work with others. I didn't know that. But I was being primed up to do just that from my training. Sifu was teaching me to do just that. Uh, so with that being said and done, one day Sifu introduces a training to the group. One of my sisters was basically dying um here she is on my hold on one second one of my tai chi sisters here she is on my altar here r.i.p i don't know if you can see that but uh that's sifu jen r.i.p to her but uh he sits her in the middle of the circle we have eight people in a circle and she's sitting in the middle and she has a uh, ailment, a disease of some type. Mm -hmm. Very bad. I won't really say what it was, but it was pretty bad. And uh, we started focusing on this guided meditation practice that Sifu was taking us through with my sister sitting in the middle. So basically, we were, we, our bodies are basically 
energy conductors, right? We're huge energy conductors. So with one mind, one breath, we can do some pretty miraculous things when we're working together. But we all have to have our mind and intention set in the right place. And everybody has to have an open heart, has to also know that there are no limitations and to truly trust in the practice. So that takes a soul group. And we put her in the middle and we started doing these energy practices. You know, there's a lot of details in the energy practices. And it involved meditation, uh, mindfulness, um, dealing with uh, different colors and visualizations and stuff like that. But she began to get well. We would do this every Sunday. Every Sunday, we would sit her in the middle and do this. And she regained her health, actually, for quite some time. For quite some time. She just passed a couple of years ago, but not from the complication, from something totally different. And my Tifu, when he got sick, mm -hmm. I ended up laying hands on him. I didn't know what I was doing at that moment. He was, it's, it's really weird how this, how this practice works. So he was actually becoming my patient and my client at the time. And he was wow. guiding me through the way to actually do the practice. I had no idea what I was doing. Okay. And he was guiding me through the whole, the whole technique. Sifu regained his health. Wow. The third client slash patient of mine, and these are all very sick people that I've been drawn to, um, was my mom. My mom was in a coma, unresponsive coma in South Carolina. Uh, she went in the hospital to have a, an elective surgery done, a hip replacement. Needless to say, she slips into a deep coma and non-responsive. So I go there and they're planning to pull the plug. You know, they want the family to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And it's a long story, but just to make it short, I end up having some alone time with my mom in her room. She's in the ICU. And my mom and I make a connection through the breath. We connect. And it was very intimate. I mean, as intimate as you could ever imagine. This was the most intimate experience in my life with my mom and it was unbelievable. My mom came out of that coma and I never shared that experience with my family. No one knew about it. I never told anybody. I just started telling the story a couple of years ago because I figured some people needed to hear it. And my mom has no account. She doesn't remember any of it. And she was guiding me through the whole session. She was actually instructing me through wow. slight body gestures, through facial expressions, until the point where she was no longer in a deep coma. She was actually um, writing on a pad. Not very legible, but just enough that we could figure out what she was talking about. Yes. Just giving basically look like she was drawing um, little symbols and signs and, you know, little sigils or whatever. But she would let you know whenever we figured out what she was talking about, she would give us a response. I would say, Mom, if I gave you what you wanted, squeeze my hand two times or squeeze my hand one time or things like that. She was just asking for, like, ice on her lips, wet my lips with ice. And if it was right, she would say, turn off the lights in the room or darken the shade. But we were on that level. It was a mental thing, just her and I communicating like that. It was no talking like this at all. It was none of that. It was simply amazing. Needless to say, I left town came back to Florida mm -hmm. and within one day mom was fully responsive sitting up in her bed soon to be discharged out of the hospital back in rehabilitation moving towards a healthy recovery blew my mind and then your mom is the next big story and you know the story on that wow yeah my, my mom had so fallen yeah my, I'll just tell them it's really fast my mom had fallen and uh, she was and I and I, I told this to Sifu Lester, and he created the, a healing session that day. Um, and that was our, our I don't know if it was the Tai Chi session. Yes, it was. It was the Tai Chi. Session. Yeah, we call it a Bagua oven. The what did we call it? Sorry, Bagua oven. Bagua <laughs> oven. What does that eight mean? Eight people, at least eight people, 
Bagua is a it's a symbol, and I don't have one here. I'm looking for it. Okay. It's similar to the Tai Chi sign, but but yeah. basically it deals with the eight energies, eight directions. So we have eight people minimum in a circle with one person in the middle, and that way the energy can't escape because of the eight people pattern. It's deep information. We'll talk about it later. Ooh. But we had more than eight because we had the whole eight, we had the whole soul group here connected, yes. and this was distant healing with your mom we weren't physically together so we did a distant healing session with your mother and you know the story it, it, it was amazing my my by the time before we were even done my mother was literally released from that hospital she was never admitted she'd been in the er and they, they released her they sent her back <laughs> she, I mean, it was my mother's ninety. My mother's ninety years old, and, and a fall, you know, could be a very mm. bad thing. And and she had a hematoma on her head, and they sent her home. Said she's fine. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. And actually, amazing. I, I think at the time it was like two thirty-eight or something like that. That when they sent her home, and we were there between two and three, doing you know, doing that that healing that bagua oven. <laughs> Right. Incredible. So, w w with that being said, remember earlier I said we have general Tai Chi, mm -hmm. we have inner door and outer door students. Yes. Typically, outer door students or general students don't learn this healing aspect of the practice. They don't get that deep into that. I am so generally. Drunk. I am so drawn to that. I would love to learn a lot more about that. That's that's energy work. And right. So, so resonating. With exactly. Me. Yeah. Right. So you're not going to learn that from, I would say, 99.999% of the Tai Chi people out there. You have Tai Chi people teaching Tai Chi who've only learned Tai Chi at a weekend seminar. And that's pretty sad. So you can imagine how much they, they can actually teach you. Not very much. It's going to be pretty, uh, it's, 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 that's when you do it for money, you know, but, you know, when you get that involved, people do things they shouldn't do. They get these weekend certificates and they don't have the skill sets to teach it. But I say at least they put the people on the journey. I, that's I have to, I, I agree with that. I think so too. I mean, I mean, some people may not even have ever heard of Tai Chi. Right. Now they've heard of it. And, right. You know. Exactly. But, and then they, that opens up a, a book and then they can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and with all the resources out here, you know, you, you're bound to find a decent teacher one way or another. They're, they're out there. So let me ask you this. Uh, so, and by the way, if you want, if you have any specific questions for Sifu Lester Holmes, this is a good time to do it. Um, and I've been putting comments up on the screen the whole time, and I think you can. You'll probably look back, look back later when you've, um, if you want to, go through the comments. And there's a lot of people saying a lot of amazing things, but I don't want to interrupt you. Um, but I wanted right. to. To wait, was it? It was. Come on, spirit, give it back to me. I was I was talking and they were telling me what to do. Oh, it's um. Nope. <laughs> I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh no, it wasn't you. It was me cutting myself off. I do that too. I digress and then normally I can get my way back, but I don't know where it was. But I, I guess. Oh yes, I do know exactly what it is. Thank you, high five spirit. Um, where <laughs> can you do any um like if somebody wants to book private sessions with you online or in person or do you do any like seminars like if anybody wants to have like a like a group like besides the live like do you do anything like that and is it for donation how does that work you know actually i do pretty much all of the above because i don't put myself in a box or a container i'm very flexible and you know anybody that wants to learn i do my best to make sure that i can either teach them myself or get you in contact with someone who can teach you now i've been doing a lot of teaching online because of the current circumstances you know either doing one-on-ones i'm doing a lot of privates online on zoom sessions yes um which i like because you know you i can see the student the student can see me i can give one-on-one -on -one instruction i can point my hand here and say move this like that fix this like that and then there's also the, um, as we said, the daily uh, Tai Chi soul group gatherings that we have on Facebook. 
the live stream sessions. You're more than welcome to be there, please. Um, and every you day, those month, from your personal page, is that correct? And then you broadcast it also into the uh, your your group Tai Chi 360. Right, right. So send me a friend uh, a friend request. That way you can get the reminders, and mm -hmm. um, they'll pop up. You know, I guess they'll pop up on your on your page every day. But I always put the live streams on my personal page every day. And for now, I'm leaving them there. I say for now because things can always change. And I'm thinking about doing something a little different after we have the uh, live gathering. I may move them to somewhere else. Okay. But uh, for now, simply plan to attend. Um, I would say come for the 1 o'clock standing session as well. You know, we do 1 o'clock standing meditation. A lot of people run away from standing meditation. And I, I, like I said before, the reason being is because as humans, we are addicted to distractions. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So they think that it's bored. That's the first gatekeeper to standing meditation. Boredom. Here's another one. I got a little pain in my foot. Got a little pain in my back. Got a little pain in my shoulder. Pain. And then there's number three. The monkey mind simply won't stop. They won't allow the monkey mind to settle down. We call it the monkey mind because he's jumping around from thought to thought to thought to thought to thought to thought to thought. To thought. Always want to entertain the next thought. So people get bored with the practice and they want to move on to something else. They want to graduate early. I've been doing this practice for over 20 years. I haven't graduated yet. We are students for life. We have to realize that we're always a student. If we ever stop being a student, we close our mind off, and then we're no longer childish. We begin to get old. Excellent question. Deborah Sharp says, Lester, does the standing meditation help with balance? With balance? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the guiding principles for Tai Chi is center yourself. Center yourself. So we work on centering before we begin to move. So we go from stillness to motion. In order to go into stillness or from stillness to motion, First, we must find the true center. We want everything coming from center. And that's when I early I spoke about the Dantian, the lower yes. energy center. Yes, yes. That is our center of gravity. That's our physical center of gravity. Also, Tai Chi is known for slip and fall prevention. Tai Chi itself is known for slip and fall prevention. That's Very so popular for that. Very popular for that. And there's lots of medical data to support that. I, Slip and fall prevention. That's that's so huge. That's so huge. Can am I? Can I say what you offered with my mom? Is that all right or no? Absolutely. So you're not going to believe this, guys. Oh yeah, you probably would now that you've met Sifu Lester Holmes. So I I was really upset. Um, I forget how did it even start. The whole thing with my mom falling. Oh, my mom called me. Um, and I'm not going to go into any you know dramatic detail. But she called me. She wasn't herself, and she said, "I keep falling. Am I dying?" And and she was really kind of like out of it, and it wasn't like the mom that I know. Um, and so I was very upset about that. And he, I was, t I mentioned it to to Sifu and he, and I, and I said, and I, I said, is there anybody that maybe, you know, or you or that I could like pay someone to go visit her sometimes? I feel like she's lonely or maybe she could use them. The Tai Chi, the, the slip and fall prevention that, that Sifu talks about, you know, some movement because she's been isolated in her room for many, many months. She's 90 years old. She gets up to, and they're really over medicating her. I just found out that's all different issue. I'm handling that. But, um, I, I mean, spirits handling it, but um, but like if she has some movement and some company, I, I think she could last for like 20 more years or whatever. Anyway, Sifu said, I would never take money for it. I would absolutely go visit your mother or myself or one of my, my, my top students. I don't, I, I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, like we'll do it every day. And I don't know if my, I don't know if I'm going to handle it every day, but I mean, literally this is what he said. And I, and I, and I believe him. 
and there and 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 the governor interestingly no, no but no surprise um because you know spirit works the day that i so I, that next day i immediately called the facility and i told them about this tai chi master and he's going to come over and speak be with mom and work with her and they said well you know we are still not allowing any visitors in the facility but this morning the governor <laughs> just said that they're going to open it back up so it might be like a month um but but it's already happening the governor already made the that happened. So, I mean, it's, I, I was in tears all over the place and gratitude. And um, I mean, honestly, even if you, if you just, just visited her one time, you know, and she just knows that, but it's just so profound. It's just so profound. I mean, imagine, imagine how many elderly people, you know, could, could live long lives by, by just not falling, you know, I mean, this, mm -hmm. This is so profound, Sifu. It really is. I mean, I even wonder if they would. So look, Megan. Hmm. Megan. So with you saying that, right? Well, how many seniors can benefit or actually need this practice? Many, 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 many. So That's part true. of the Tai Chi 360, which is the philosophy that I put together, the organization hmm. is to actually have people such as yourself learn from me basic 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 movements that can be shared with the senior population you become you can become a, a community leader not necessarily a teacher more of a, a liaison or, or a, a friend or a partner or someone you can play with and learn basics from and, and if they want to learn more they come to me and that's another part of what we're doing now. We're getting people, tra I say trained up, to be able to do just that, to share in the community with the seniors, bridging the gap between us and our seniors because our seniors are feeling left behind. They, 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 really, need, they really need us. This is part of the community. Yeah. No, they, 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 they really are. They, they really are. And um, they're... But I'm, I'm excited because I feel like all of this came around and I'm not going to broadcast the, the, the rest of the personal thing, but I'll tell you at another time. Um, and I'll probably tell the whole soul group at another time too. It's just, this, this isn't the place. Uh, but my mom's journey is going to help a lot of people too. And be, becoming, people are becoming aware. Um, but this is such a beautiful experience. Um, uh, Deborah Ray Buck Sharp is saying me, <laughs> me. I love that. Gary is saying, mind over matter. If you don't let it control your mind, it won't matter. And Jennifer Williams is saying, I feel what you're saying, and I pray that many beautiful old souls get the help that they deserve. And, you know, many of our soul group are actually in senior care or they're caregivers or they're nurses. Mm -hmm. They're in the medical field yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the military, Are you still there? Yeah. Um. Can you see me? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, th I thought I heard it. Uh, yeah. I heard. I thought I heard it phase out. But yeah, I actually uh, in the military, I have a uh, medical background, and my title in the military or my my specialty would be equivalent to a uh, physician assistant on the outside in in the civilian sector. So I was a uh, surgical first assistant. So I've, I've actually um, dealt with a lot of uh, seniors in different capacities. Um, I've dealt with people from all ages, from, from birth to, to, you know, the geriatrics. And oftentimes I use a lot of medical terminology and stuff like that for those who want to absorb that part of the training as well. You know, it's, it just helps us to know thyself, you know. So I, I, I try to find fun ways of throwing that stuff in there as well so we can know more about our bodies as well. Absolutely. So I have a real, real close uh, affection for the older people, to be honest with you. I really do. I love that. And they need, they need, they need advocates. They really need advocates. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of sometimes if, 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 if the facility or whatever doesn't see that there's anybody like advocating for these people, they fall through the cracks. And I didn't even know that was a thing until recently I became very aware that it's a thing. 
<laughs> it's, it's really, yeah. it's a real, yeah. And so, um, but again, I don't want to, I'm going to want to go that in that direction right now because it's not high vibe, but I want to say that Deb, Deborah says, my doctor told me that it's my fight. By the way, so you're calling it my fibromyalgia. I, I really want to invite you not to call it yours if you don't want it, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean to Thank jump, you. but I, <laughs> I'll give that to, to Sifu in a moment. She's saying it makes me off balance and I miss walking with confidence. But I, I would like you to speak to that if, you would, if you're would, if you drawn, Sifu. No, actually, I'm glad that you mentioned that because, uh, and I, I always encourage people to do their own research, you know, whenever I say something. I, I follow in my Sifu's words. Um, he always says, don't believe anything that I say. Don't believe anything that anyone says, not just him. And I'm like, what is this man talking about? Why is my teacher telling me not to believe him? <laughs> it didn't make sense to me. But basically, I, I, I live by, by that principle as well because I like for people to do their own research so that they can get a better understanding and stop believing things that were just given to them. You understand what I mean? So if you look at the word believe... It's be live, be live, right? So we have to, right? So look at the word and break it down, you know, and we have to be live. We can't just take people's word for it. Exactly. And speaking of fibromyalgia, people actually benefit from training Tai Chi. It, it helps to alleviate the symptoms to reduce the symptoms that are associated with fibromyalgia, um, arthritic joints, hypertension, diabetes, uh, weight loss. There's a long laundry list of things that these ancient Chinese practices actually can help us uh, gain health and wellness from. They are truly holistic art forms. Now, will it be challenging for you? Probably so. Absolutely. It's challenging for everybody to some degree in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you do the best that you can do. I have students that have double hip replacements, double hips and knees, but they still do their Tai Chi to the best of their ability. Now, that's probably no comparison to what you're dealing with, but that's just to give you an example that we all do the best that we can. Um, I can think of actually a, a Tai Chi sister of mine who is a fellow teacher. She has fibromyalgia. She lives with it. Okay. She uses her teaching as her medication, mm. medication, in motion medication in motion wow did you hear that guys right medication so the in motion mm. right so the medicine the movement is the medicine it will help you get better now we will have to incorporate a holistic lifestyle yeah. and not just depend on the tai chi alone but tai chi will definitely help you with your current circumstances Absolutely. Just be patient and trust in the practice. Don't give up. You know, expect it to be a little challenging, but know that your desire and your group provides the uplift. Remember the third principle? Uplift. No one left behind. No one left behind. Helping each other along the way. Yes. That's the soul group. That's why we're here. I look forward to seeing you on at one or two o'clock any day of the week in the live stream beginning your tai chi journey i'm so excited i want to say thank you again for being here I Absolutely. Know, kept you for like an hour and 45 minutes but honestly i mean i could just talk to you all day and i know that all of us are just like appreciating and absorbing this so yeah, every day guys, every day from, from one to three, standing meditation from one to two, Tai Chi, daily flow uh, from two to three. And again, Tai Chi 360 is Lester's group. His name is Lester Holmes on Facebook. Definitely follow him, join the group. And um, 
and and maybe maybe sometime Lester will honor me with allowing me to uh, to host a, a private experience or something like that. I would love to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. I would love that. Please. Home or something, and and this way you could because I'm sure my form is all over the place, but I'm, I'm doing my best. And I'm Who cares? Having, <laughs> but I would just a little, you know. And then, but I want to say one last thing. You also said like even if somebody was were seated and they couldn't stand up, they can still do things. Am I right? No matter where you are, no matter where they I'm, are physically. I'm sitting down right now. You can't see me as well, but absolutely, you you move the upper torso, mm -hmm. you move the arms, and before you know it, you will slowly but surely start moving more and more of your body. That's just the way it works. I love that. You Is sit down and you just follow along to the best of your ability. Perfect. Fantastic. I encourage it. <laughs> so again, you guys can watch the replay of this on, on YouTube. It'll also be on Facebook and all the groups. But uh, but I also really want to encourage YouTube as well. And um, and I invite Seafood Lester to look at the comments and respond to anybody. I know you're really busy. Um, but definitely join the live streams. Definitely. If, if you're drawn... I'll be right there, Chevy. My cats and my dogs are all like, it's dinner time. But uh, <laughs> if you're drawn, um, you just come and, and, and be there because you're going to find uh, there's still going to be something for you. Just like uh, just like when I do readings and I say in spirits, I say spirit knows who's there and there's going to be something for you. Well, with Tai Chi, it could be like the, something that changes your entire life. Like it has mine. And I just want to say. Absolutely. So. Love you all. Thank you so much for all being here today and co-creating this beautiful event with us. Thank you, Soul Group. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for always being there for us. Thank you, Soul Group.